Immigration is a big issue this election season in the United States. It is going to be one of the key topics in next week's presidential debate showdown between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Both want to curb immigration, but their paths to reach that point are starkly different. Speaking of different, Trump seems to be deviating from his own path too. The former president wants to give green cards to all foreign students studying in the United States colleges. Now this is a departure in Trump's usual stance. He has said immigrants are poisoning the blood of America. It is also a reversal in restrictions that Trump had brought while he was in office. Immigrants, especially Indians, lauded the statement, but their happiness was short-lived. Trump's campaign press secretary walked back and spoke about an quote-unquote aggressive wetting process. She specifically said that those granted citizenship will exclude all communists, radical Islamists, Hamas supporters, America haters and public charges. And only most skilled graduates will be chosen. Trump made the statement while wooing a Silicon Valley investor and his podcast followers. Experts say the idea of handing all foreign students a green card with their diplomas is absurd. It would have been a sweeping change that would have opened a vast path to American citizenship for foreigners. The State Department estimates that the United States hosts roughly a million international students every single year, a majority of whom come from China and India. Now, correspondent Susan Tehrani has more on this from New York. Former U.S. President Donald Trump suggested that non-citizens who graduate from U.S. colleges and universities should automatically get a green card, allowing them to stay here in the country. He made these comments during an interview on a podcast emphasizing the need for high-skilled workers and expertise and regretted that the U.S. is losing talent from individuals of top schools like Harvard and MIT. This stance, of course, contrasts with his past actions as president when he wanted to limit legal migration for the most part. The former president's comments, of course, come as the issue of immigration, notably illegal migration, has taken center stage in the run-up to the upcoming presidential election, with Democrats who have often tried to present the former president as anti-immigration across the board. Susan Tehrani reporting there from New York for We On World Is One. Now to take this further, we are being joined by Mark Marowitz from New York. He is a political commentator, also a professor at State University of New York Maritime College. Mr. Hello. Marowitz, thank you so much for joining us here on Vion. Good to see you. How should one read Trump's statements coming in and then the, his team, campaign team, of course, backtracking on it? Does it suggest that he's actually distancing himself from how he saw immigration while he was in office or is it suggesting that he has some room of discussion when it comes to immigration? I mean, it's all politics. Uh, we have a presidential campaign and as you pointed out, we have a debate between Trump and Biden next week and Biden has just announced a number of important immigration measures. He has dealt with the asylum issue and made some changes there, but most importantly, he's changed the rules with respect to uh, non-American spouses of Americans, and also with respect to what we call the childhood dreamers in the deferred action for childhood arrivals, those are the children who are here, brought to this country, now will be eligible for citizenship. And importantly, one of the important aspects of this is that ordinarily you need to leave the country and come back to the United States to apply for these things. And Biden has changed that. So Trump comes along and proposes that, as you said, everyone graduating from a American college is eligible for a green card. Now, I don't think they walked it back that much. I mean, clearly there has to be a vetting process in terms of that policy. But think about it. What is Trump doing? He's speaking with a Silicon Valley investor. He's trying to raise funds for his campaign. And he wants to have something to say at the debate next week. And finally, I would say, as uh, we have a famous uh, baseball player, Yogi Berra, who said, it isn't over till it's over and Trump isn't president yet. 
and Biden hasn't been reelected. So all of this is campaign politics. To implement these gigantic changes by Trump is completely speculative at this point. We don't know if he'll be, be elected again. And as far as the Biden program, I mean, we don't know how that's going to play out. So a lot of imponderables. And the bottom line is that the Senate proposed an immigration plan and Trump stopped it. He stopped the Republicans. It was a bipartisan plan. So we're pretty stuck on this. So what we have here are some some various events, right. all campaign oriented. Right. Mr. Marwitz, it's interesting you say that it's just campaign politics. You correctly mentioned Biden and Trump both are playing on immigration politics, given that it's an important issue in this presidential election. Do you think the American voters are able to see through this? Look, I mean, American voters have very strong opinions on immigration. It's probably one of the biggest issues in America today in terms of the 2024 campaign. As far as seeing through it, I think they will basically take the position of the side that they're on. And they, they like Trump, they'll listen to what he has to say. They like Biden, they'll listen to what he has to say. We're very polarized in that respect. The bottom line is nobody's actually fixed the immigration problem. And that's the problem. And the fact that we need bipartisan political buy-in, namely Republicans and Democrats, to get together and work up a comprehensive plan for immigration reform. We don't have that. Right. Now, these piecemeal things that we see here, we don't know how they're going to play out. We don't know how they're going to work. But right. at the end of the day, we need to address it. These might just be fix, little fixes, but not enough for the full repair of a system that clearly everyone agrees and American right. voters would perceive is broken. All right, Mr. Marowitz, before I let you go very quickly, since we are talking about the voters, just yesterday we did a story about how a lot of the American voters are undecided and they are eagerly waiting for the presidential debate that's slated for next week. What do you think is coming next week? It's a test for Biden. I don't see... Uh, as far as undecided, I mean, it's clearly Biden has been shown to be challenged uh, and in terms of his age. And Trump isn't a youngster either. And right. we'll have to see how they do on the debate. And I think that will be very important for voters to have uh, certainty and confidence that President Biden is not challenged because of his of his age and and that Trump is capable of serving as president. But at the end of the day, we've got each side. The voters are in their silos and we're polarized. And I don't believe, to be candid, that there are so many undecided voters. I think we have a lot of decided voters. But this debate is going to be very, very important to make sure that we have two viable candidates who can assume the presidency right. and do the job properly. All right, Mr. Marwitz, since you say it's a referendum on Biden, let's just hope he doesn't end his debate by calling uh, Trump that asked him to shut up or something like last time. Thank you so much for joining us here on the broadcast. It's going to be a wild debate. I'm yeah, sure. that, that, that's what we are all waiting for. Let's see what happens next week. Thank you so much, Mr. Marwitz, and thank you for joining I, us here on Vyond to get us all those insights. I, yes, sir. For all the latest news, download the Vyond app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.